show and talking about your ideal guest and various things like that but there's some very exciting news we found out maybe a couple of days ago which is you well I'll let you is let you say it what is it well Tom and I we were talking about some upcoming things that we're, we're going to be doing mm -hmm. and we had already discussed a new movie which he's got coming out which is called deadly retribution so we were talking about the casting. We're going to have an upcoming casting call. So we were discussing the casting. We were discussing lead roles and the format of how we're going to put things together. And out of the blue, uh, Tom asked me to play the lead. <laughs> so I was kind of shocked. I'm like, okay, he's asked me to play the lead. And of course, he's not going to give me all of the information because okay. that's just how he is. Now hold it, the lead character is a good guy or a bad guy? He's a, a bad guy, okay. he's a monster. So okay. I'm gonna play, well, I'm gonna say a monster. I prefer gangster. Okay. He is a, the guy's a gangster and uh, I think I'll do pretty well in the world. Why do you think that? Well, I'm born and raised in the city of Detroit. Okay. I have a lot of life experiences uh, and situations, and I can definitely relate to the character. See, you've lost in that over, but I know you had a background that was not as calm as you are right now. Explain that, Rico, because um, you grew up in the 70s when the, uh, what's that, um, BK, Earl Flynn, all of that, the Latin Kings, all of that type of stuff was very, very prevalent at, during that time, correct? Absolutely. So, um, what was your connection with that, if any? Along with YBI and, and oh, other... Young Boys Incorporated, okay. The, uh, all I can say is, you know, I have these experiences <laughs> and affiliations okay. you know, that I had back in certain times, you know, and I feel that this would be beneficial to me in the film. Okay. <laughs> We're going to keep it at that. You gloss that over. So that's great. That's great. But in other words, 
your experience or bringing this experience to the character is something you don't have to go out and study or find someone that you can you know shadow to find there you can come you can draw from personal experience I, I take it absolutely see the reason I say I'm so proud of it because seeing you act as Kango and act of vengeance seeing you annoying you outside of that and all that and as I say I always I joke hey he can bench press this view a big old guy like that I'm just proud of the fact that this character matches so much of what I saw in that persona. How are you going to prepare for it? Because I believe Tom didn't give you too much information about the movie, the plot, the character. He didn't give you the name, did he? No, he didn't. The, the preparation Typical is, time. is really not a factor. Preparation is not really a factor. Okay. Because one thing that Tom knows about me is that I can fit the role. Yes. Not only can I fit the role, but I'm great at ad living, and I'm great at if this was not something that a gangster would say or would do or okay. how they would act, then I, he would allow, would allow me to incorporate what I know that the gangster would do or how they would react. So, of the movie gangsters that we know out there, um, Wesley Snipes as Nino Brown, um, what's that? Denzel Washington as Frank Lucas, Christopher Walken. King of New York, I forget his name in the movie, but King of New York. Who would you look at and say, let me draw on their experiences? Because all of those was a wide range of, of characters, especially Christopher Walken. He come on screen and, you know, he's just looking crazy in that movie, uh, King of New York. Denzel was more cerebral. Wesley Snipes was more in your face. I'll knock you out right now for saying something wrong. <laughs> How, what are you using to draw on as the basis besides just your past experience? if any of those characters are relevant. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You know, Wesley Snipes in the movie he played a role. New Jack City. Okay. Uh, Robert De Niro played a role in Scarface. Oh. Hold it. Um, Al Pacino. I mean Al Pacino. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. He played, he played the role in Scarface. I'll put it to you like this. If you combine the two, and take them to the tenth power. That will be this character. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, they're going to be things that, like I said, Tom hasn't told me anything. Okay. But he allows me to incorporate. There's going to be things that you haven't seen in certain gangsters that you're going to see in me. So I, I like you and your swag. You came in like the Hall of Fame Awards. You stepped out. You and Shannon were coordinated and, and by way of what you dressed, um, how you just simply commanded a presence. You didn't enter a room. You made the entrance. So in something like that, you know, you're going to make your wardrobe part of that character, your stylings. Uh, how, how are you going to do that? Well, absolutely. My, my wardrobe, I can tell you this, I have a pretty lengthy wardrobe. Uh, and not only do I have the wardrobe, I have the shoes accompanying the wardrobe <laughs> and the jewelry accompanying the wardrobe. And this was not something that just comes about, this is just who I am. And if anybody knows me, they know that when I go somewhere or I enter somewhere, I will be noticed. Yes, and that's that again, stepping up into the room that day. Even I think the mask was coordinated with your outfit. Yeah, so, now one other thing too, your character, even though you don't know a lot about it, will you be able to incorporate your signature move in that character, you think? Absolutely. I can incorporate the signature move, but I'm thinking of a different signature move. Okay. I did tell Tom about a signature move that I will do that I don't believe anybody else has done. Okay. <laughs> and I want it to be the initial signature move so it sets the precedence of the character that I'm playing. Now, 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 now this ties right into what we were saying earlier about um, your artist. When you go on set, go in front of the camera, is it characteristic you want to, ex uh, ex um, I guess, show to them? Here's how you should do this segue into this type of mindset. Like, are you looking for your singers to be actors or rappers to be actors so they can follow into your footsteps? Well, the thing about it is a singer and an actor, I mean a rapper or just a song artist, period, or anybody, you have to be an actor completely. You have to be a way, you have to be a salesman. You have to sell yourself because if you don't know how to give a good presentation of yourself, then people, they're not going to remember who you are. They're not going to acknowledge you. Uh, if I was to 
if I'm on the street and somebody sees me and I've got on a torn shirt, I got on a hat, some torn jeans, and I'm, I could be driving a Maserati. The only thing that those people are going to think about is that Maserati. But if I'm dressed like I'm dressed right now, I'm dressed like I'm dressed, then guess what? When I walk into some, somewhere, somebody's going to say, wow, man, he looks like, you know, he's a, a, a dressing person. I, I want to see what this guy's about. You know, he, he comes in, he, he presents himself a certain way, and a lot of times people will gravitate and try to figure out who I am and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a people person. I love being a people person. I'm not a closed off, standoffish type of person. I'm a great people person. So th this is going to shine through in that character of yours? Because I, 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 I'm, I'm picturing, I always say gentle giant type of thing, but I don't know, again, what this character will embody. Will you be ruthless? Will you be one of the ones that, with a look alone, you yeah. can sit back and, and sit somebody down and shut them up, that type of thing? I will incorporate that, but even when, I'll put it like this, for me, my presentation will be, even though they fear me, even though they hate me, even though they despise me, they love me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you've already gotten that just from the snippet of saying you're going to be the lead character. You've already started your research, I take it then. Well, my research is me. Okay. All I'm going to do is take out what's already in me okay. and let it go on screen. Do you think you're going to make an effective villain? I believe I will be effective, but I'm not going to toot any horn. I'm just going to say I'm going to do the best job that I can. I'm going to give the audience, the people, everybody around me 1,000% what's in me okay. and show them what a real gangster should be. And you're going to carry this movie as the lead. You know that, right? Absolutely. Are you ready for the rigors of that? Absolutely. Uh, well, but again, I mean, that's confidence, but, you know, you, you, have you ever done it to this extent? Well, I'll put it like this. Mm -hmm. You have a lead role every day when you wake up. You have a lead role. Okay. That determines who you are, what you're going to do, and where you're going to be. So I'm in a lead role every day. Okay. So that won't be something that will be surprising to me. It'll just be something that's comfortable to me. So already are you looking toward other projects or other elements to say, hey, he has enough time, has enough confidence in me to put me in the lead. Maybe I can be a lead in someone else's or this is an incentive to try other things else in the lead. Are you looking toward that well, with your company? Well, I haven't really thought about myself being pushed in that particular direction. You know, I've really been focusing on pushing Regal World Entertainment. Through Hold up. Well, why not? You said it before, someone who is a natural should go with their natural elements. Why aren't you doing that? But I'm saying uh, I hadn't thought about it. I okay. didn't say that there wasn't a reservation for it. But it's just the fact I hadn't thought about it. You know, I'm in a trilogy. Mm -hmm. And what I mean that I'm in a trilogy, mm -hmm. I'm in a trilogy with entertainment, with film, and with music. Okay. And the trilogy that I belong to, we're all encompassed together while being separate to grow, to promote, and to push forward. So I'm always looking at the trilogy. Okay. Not just with my company, but with their companies as well, to make sure that we continue to push, continue to move forward. Because one of the things that we want to do is make a mark in each genre of the film, of the music, and of all the situations of entertainment. We want to make the mark. We want to come off the box and we want to win the race and put that mark on there just like Motown did. Yes. Except but what we'll do is we'll be different. We'll just be film, music, and all types of entertainment. But want to be shown, want to be placed on that star level just like Motown. So just like what I was saying before, I say, when you did an interview, I said, when I saw that interview, Rico, I said, you are a natural, and yet you never thought about doing it, you should have. What if someone sees this presentation, this performance you do in Deadly Retribution, and says, come with us, sir, because we have avenues that we think you need to walk down. What would you say to that? Well, you know, in everything you do, 
you have to sit down and you have to weigh the pros mm -hmm. and you have to weigh the cons. What are the pros? What are the cons? Because you know, I'm saying I'm saying you're a natural, and well, I don't see any negatives in it. Well, the pros the pros would be that I can facilitate who I am, that I can bring out of me what needs to be placed, okay. what's real to be put on film. The cons is that if they want to turn me into something that I'm not, okay. that's not going to exude the actual character that they want me to play. I want to be a real character. I want to be a natural character. And I want to be the people's character. I don't just want to be something that's thrown on the wall, or, oh, he's in this, because you know this as well as I do. There have been a lot of Hollywood actors that have been in roles or been pushed into roles or took on roles that later on they did really didn't want to be in. Right. They went to the box office and they plummeted. They didn't raise themselves, they plummeted. Then they had to go through all over again the rebuilding. Because people only think about what you did then, not what you've done. And that's the reality of the situation. So with Deadly Retribution, are you going to have a hand into designing that character more? Or are you going to have like, you know, you get to say what it will or what that character will or not? You don't even know the character's name yet. <laughs> I mean, sir, uh, do you? No, I don't. Tom has a, Tom is very tight-lipped on that. We, we got to sneak and find a way to get him to, <laughs> you know, get that information out. Don't let him know, though. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this much. I'm not worried about that okay. because the diversification that he has of allowing you to do things and even with the hiring of the people. If you think about this, any film that he's ever done has been total diversification of character. Correct. And he's allowed people to embellish, he's allowed people to do things that they felt was more comfortable, more realistic, and he's very open to everything. Uh, that's like if I said, okay, if he said, well, say this. I want you to say, okay, we're going to go that way, doggone it. <laughs> and I'm saying, okay, Tom, that's not what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. That's not what I would say out in the street. But I would be like, damn it, I'm going to do this. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, this highest land, so forth and so on. Tom, you're like, oh, that sounds good. Okay. He's like, okay, we're going to go with that. Okay. But if you say something crazy out the way, these mother, he's going to be okay, no, we're not using that. I don't want my language to be too high up the, on that scale. Okay. So we're not going to do that. But let's come to a happy meeting. Let's think of something else we can do and come to a happy meeting because I don't want my I want my audience to be in. I don't okay. want my audience to be out. So now, now how soon do you think you would know exactly what your character is by way of name or what's going on, even what the plot of the movie is? That is <laughs> not my call. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's his call. So I'm not really worried about it. Oh, I, I'm sorry. All the time I say soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. yeah. I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> when it happens, it happens. Okay. When it gives me the information, I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. Any other ways you're going to prepare for it? Are you going to try to sit back? I mean, is it fight scenes like like martial arts? So anything like that, you got to well, sit and prepare for it. If, right. if you know Tom, he's not going to have a movie unless there's some martial arts. Okay. He he is just not his. His if you know Tom's background, Tom is a fourth degree black belt, uh -huh. and he's been in the martial arts for a long time. He was he was a person that loved Bruce Lee. He thought he was the african-american incarnation of bruce lee and if you ever seen any pictures of him back then he especially with his jerry curl <laughs> you can see he was cut up he was ripped and uh, he looked just like bruce lee mm. you know i have martial arts background oh well, that's that and he is that's what he loves to do he loves to create the fighting scenes he holds stunt camps for for different people when the actors have never thrown a punch Never knew how to fall, never knew how to take a punch, how to kick, you know, had stunt camps in the past, all those different types of things. And you're going to be part of this too, right? This oh, yeah. Now, okay. what, what is your martial arts training? It's an intro. Okay, okay, great. So this will come into play with your character. This will be something, again, you see yourself pulling off fight scenes and running and jumping and all that good stuff to be able to say, I can carry this movie. Well, I don't know about the running and jumping because <laughs> the, the gangster that I want to play okay. is smooth. Oh, okay. He's really, really smooth. But you got to get your hands dirty. You but, when he, but when he gets his hands dirty, uh -huh. it's going to be quick. 
Okay. It's not going to be something unless it's a formidable opponent that Tom sets up to where he wants it to be a elongated scene, you know, us going at it. And during time, we'll probably have that. But for the smaller portions, it's just going to be what I like to say, a one-two hit or quit. One or two hits and you're done. Okay. <laughs> you're done. You're, you're not even thinking about anything else but, okay, which gate in heaven you're going to. Right. If you're going to the gate the other way or if you're allowed to live, what ventilator you want to choose, what color. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. That's going to be an amazing character. Like I say, I'm proud of you and the fact that you got it because when he had mentioned it, I said, yes, that is a natural. And I as I said, I keep saying it again and again and again. Your calling is going to be as an interviewer and on front of the camera doing something. I want this TV show of yours to succeed because I think, again, when people get a chance to see you putting down the questions to people on the couch, I'm, I'm curious what you would say to Barack, you know, but it'll be one of them like, it's wow, okay, I never thought of that. That type of thing because you have that way of bringing out a question. It may have been said another way, another type of interview, but you say it in such a way it's philosophical to the point you got to stop, think about it, then you answer it and all that. You're natural. So don't qu quit fighting that. Go get in front of it and everything. I can't wait to see you at the Music Awards. We're going to take a break right here real quick. When we come back, I want to talk about the fundraiser that's going to be held for Deadly Retribution and your input and insight into that. So we'll be right back.